You can go now. In response to the power of special interests in American history, many have attempted to curb the influence of corrupt politics on the American election process. In 1971, for instance, the Federal Election Campaign Act was passed to restrict the amount of money that could be spent on political ads and to keep smaller, earlier PACs or political action committees in line. However, in 2010, opponents of Hillary Clinton appealed to the Supreme Court in the case known as the Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission, which concluded that as corporations are comprised of people, they must be considered as people, and therefore the Supreme Court determined that the Federal Election Commission's laws were an infringement on the First Amendment. As a result, a new entity called the Super PAC was created, an organization that could support a single candidate with unlimited amounts of money, as long as that money was not donated directly to said candidate, and there was no coordination between the Super PAC and the candidate's personal campaign. With this new entity appearing in American politics, many wonder whether Super PACs will bring good or ill to America. Some argue that Super PACs could be beneficial to politics at large, that they would help out candidates who have fallen behind in funds by supporting them with unlimited private investments. In fact, Newt Gingrich's supportive Super Political Action Committee, Winning Our Future, has helped Gingrich stay in the 2012 Republican primaries far longer than he would have been able to without such fiscal reinforcement. Before Super PACs existed, a candidate that dried up his or her campaign money would be devastatingly compromised in the runnings and would have to drop out of the race. The implementation of super political action committees would level the playing field financially for opponents of an influential incumbent, just as the campaign for primary accountability is doing directly, by backing contenders that are opposing the wealthy and or influential competitor for that race. Furthermore, a campaign with a potentially unpopular message such as anti-slavery and civil rights were, would stay alive and acted longer and would be able to be far more noticeable by the public than the campaign would be without this monetary safety net. The continued existence of super PACs would keep the political race more competitive and varied so no runners secured a victory, keeping the candidates alert. Super PACs also forced a more even political race with a sitting president who already has an advantage in fundraising due to recycling of the, the same formula he or she used to win their position in the first place. Super political action committees of late have proven to be more above the table than other donation proxies or PACs, keeping voters more informed and aware of the candidates that they vote into office. Also, these political action committees take the pressure off of politicians to create politically violent attacks against other candidates, and therefore take a hit to their own credibility. By letting the super PAC sling the worst of the negative ads at the other candidates, agendas, people, ideals, etc. According to, pro to proponents, super political action committees reveal exactly how much influence each individual, union, or corporation has with their support for each candidate. The super PACs are prohibited from coordinating with candidates directly, preventing them from creating campaign promotions that complement or supplement the runner's own efforts. Super political action committees have already proven during this year's Republican primaries that they can break up the established order of politics to prevent the stagnation circling around the same wealthy and special interest groups. If handled well, the monetary backing of formerly black horse candidates would be more above board than previous funds about which contributors donate how much money into the campaign, as full implementations of super PACs would result in greater ease of exposure of any unfair practices within the election and without, through investigation. As stated previously, funds for political campaigns have existed largely unregulated for over 200 years, so the ideals of a around super political action committees and the logic backing them up aren't quite as novel as most might think. According to Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission, super political action committees are indeed a form of free speech, just applied to corporations and unions. Because independent expenditure-only committees, as they are officially known, can give political underdogs a better chance during elections and midterms, they can give unions, individuals, and corporations a direct voice in politics. They can also keep that voice in check, linking the funds to their donors instead of leaving them anonymous. 
The investigative properties of politics that super PACs create also force politicians to be more open and honest during their campaigns, as any slip in credibility on their part could be unveiled and used against them as part of their opponent's group of negative ads. If Mitt Romney really believes... Corporations are people, my friend. And Mitt Romney is a serial killer. He's Mitt the Ripper. This comical caricature of a Super PAC ad was meant to satirize the eluded viciousness of Super PAC attacks. Many fear this viciousness will lead to disaster for the American election system. One major point of those against Super PACs is that while they are prohibited from contributing directly to their favored candidates, Super PACs are able to present ads specifically for or against other candidates in indirect favor. An example of a potential problem from this fact best comes from a Republican Party debate by MSNBC in January where Mitt Romney responded to Newt Gingrich's accusations against the validity of Mitt Romney's Super PAC ads. Of course there are people who support me. They wouldn't be putting money into a PAC that supports me if there were people who support me. And with regards to their ads, I haven't seen them in it, as you know, under the law. I can't direct their ads. Oh, speaker, uh, hold on a second. I, I can't direct their ads. If there's anything in there that's wrong, I As demonstrated, many think that super PACs could easily lead to a lack of accountability for politicians in regards to negative ads as politicians would not be directly linked to them. In addition, the Center for Responsive Politics listed that as of May 17, 2012, Restore Our Future, a pro-Mitt Romney super PAC, spent over $35 million to condemn opponents of Mitt Romney as opposed to the near $7 million spent in favor of Mitt Romney. This reveals a focus on negative advertising and a further use of emotional appeal in politics rather than a discussion of important issues in order to sway voters. Alright, so do you believe Sir Pack's throughout time will utilize constructive ads or largely negative ads? Oh god, negative ads. I, people tend to vote fear um, and anger. It's the, one of the best motivators, sadly, in, in uh, politics. Hope's the biggest one, but hope's so tangential to the basics of the moment. And it's so morphous. Anger can be focused on a thing. Similarly to Mr. Deloro, Mr. Valentine also had this to address on the accountability of super PACs. Uh, probably not. More, most people are apathetic towards an election anyway. They're going to go either with what they were, their parents registered, and they're going to stay with that. Their beliefs, it doesn't matter. I don't think that's going to. If super PACs are allowed to grow, they could easily work to make the current election process more complicated in order to manipulate voters into inattentiveness in politics. In order to make it more difficult for people to discover the identity of the donors of these super PACs, these special interests could easily urge their candidates to end excessive government regulation and relax campaign funding disclosure laws. Recently, in several newspapers, including the New York Times and the LA Times, it was mentioned that Joe Ricketts and several Republican leaders hatched a plan to attack Obama for his connection to Reverend Jeremiah Wright Jr., brainstorming the use of the slogan, the defeat of Barack Hussein Obama, the Ricketts plan to end his spending for good. Although it is his middle name, the use of the name Hussein was clearly meant to arouse hysteria over the fiction that Barack Obama is a terrorist, and its use reveals that super PAC organizers are willing to inflame public opinion with borderline racist statements. The use of such statements belies a great hint of super PAC arrogance in belief of lack of accountability. Furthermore, with election races becoming ever more heated, racism could easily make a comeback due to the inflammatory rhetoric of super PACs. According to that same article, Mitt Romney officially asked his supporters not to run an ad campaign based on this but only on issues such as the economy. In addition, he had blasted Obama for character assassination in response to a super PAC ad by an Obama group highlighting negative aspects of Romney's time at Bain Capital. Meanwhile, the Obama campaign responded, calling this proposal proof of the savageness of the Republican campaign. Clearly, super PACs are a controversial issue, and only time will tell whether they will be beneficial or detrimental to American electoral process. However, that will be decided not by historians in the future, but by the people of today.
Regardless of super PACs and their efforts to influence elections, it is up to each individual voter to decide whether they will blindly follow propaganda of the left or right, or analyze critical issues and form their own opinions.